Only a few weeks ago, the music inside Skybar used to pulse. A spot where Beirut came to see and be seen. It's now a place for safety and security. Under the dust of your feet, my body. The only songs filling this space now come from hundreds of displaced people seeking refuge from Israeli bombardments. Forever. Fatin and her family are homeless, displaced by Israel's attacks on southern Lebanon. As Muslims who don't drink alcohol due to their faith, they've found an unlikely refuge. Is it weird to be here in a it's nightclub? It's weird because we are Muslims, you know, right, right. and Muslims cannot attend nightclubs, and it's nightclub, yani, it's, you know, something, yani, right. uh, yes, weird, you know. But now I have another thing, thinking, yani, I have changed my attitude. Yeah, how so? Living in a nightclub <laughs> is a paradise now. <laughs> now, and even if the war will end, I yeah. will come and uh, visit them. Shukran, uh, the only person here still doing the same job is the club's bouncer. This is use, there's no dancing now with this, with this particular clientele. He used to turn people away, but ever since Skybard opened its doors, his job is to let them in and keep them safe. That's unlike many places in Beirut where doors are closed to the displaced, even some mosques. The situation outside is desperate. The Lebanese government says some 1.2 million people have been displaced in the last year. Many are sleeping on the streets, but this place is a sanctuary. Talal al Mahdi says it's better than a five star hotel. And for many, this isn't the first time that war has led to homelessness. He says that he's fled his home four times in his life, always because of Israeli invasions, and every time they destroy his house. With U.S. elections only a week away, the entire region is looking to America for relief. Fatin's parents live in Michigan, where they're getting ready to vote in a crucial swing state. Are you hopeful that someone will stop the war? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. And it will be from America, you think, who will stop the uh, war? Kindness is always there. In America? Kindness is always in the heart of every person, mm -hmm. I think. And Matt Bradley joins us now from Beirut. Matt, we heard there the hope from people in Lebanon that the United States will help and do something to end the fighting. What more do we know about that meeting between senior White House officials and Netanyahu? Yeah, well, we're hearing that Brett McGurk and Amos Hookstein, two of the most senior envoys from the Biden administration, are headed to Tel Aviv tomorrow. Now, the main focus of this isn't actually the Gaza Strip, as we've been seeing for the past year. This diplomacy is about trying to resolve the fighting over Israel's northern border with Lebanon. Now, whether or not that could happen, there is thinking that that's more likely to see some sort of a breakthrough than what we're seeing in the Gaza Strip. And we have been hearing that Hezbollah is no longer making a ceasefire fire in the Gaza Strip, one of the preconditions for them to stop fighting the Israelis here in Lebanon. But still, there's a lot of pessimism around this. And we're also hearing from senior officials that this really could take weeks or even months to come into effect if there's an agreement at all. And what are we hearing of late from Hezbollah, Matt? The new head of that organization delivered his first address today, right? That's right, Naeem Qasim, who was just elected in the past couple of days to head Hezbollah after the assassination of Hassan Nasrallah and Hassan Nasrallah's sort of, you know, assumed successor, who hadn't even been elected to the post before he was killed by the Israelis. So we heard from Naeem Qasim, we don't even know if he's here in Lebanon. It's thought that he might actually be in Iran, where he would, of course, be seeking cover because the Israelis are picking off top Hezbollah leaders one after another. He vowed that he was going to continue the fight against the Israelis, but he also said that there was some sort of an opening for a ceasefire, though he said that Hezbollah isn't going to beg for a ceasefire from the Israelis. Ellison. Matt Bradley in Lebanon. Amazing reporting. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.